welcome to Mavi Analysis for Hedgehogs. Today's topic is again process injection. I wanted to say process hollowing. Uh, yeah, process injection. And uh, we will be looking into one, another very common technique which uses create remote thread and write process memory to inject code into another process. Today's sample is Gatak. And I got this from a Twitter user. I have to look up the name. I forgot it. Sorry, but I will write it in the description. Um, Gatak is a very interesting malware, in my opinion, because it uses steganography to obtain code from images that are hosted on several image hosting websites, services, whatever. And um, you can read about those, this steganography part here on this virus bulletin article, which I will link below. But today we just look into one small part, which is the process injection. So let's take a look at this. And for that, I will first show you how, how this looks like in Process Explorer. Am I blind? There it is. <coughs> All right, Process Explorer. And um, before you start running the sample, this one will be deleting the file on disk that's executed. So it deletes itself. This happens quite often with memory. So you might want to keep a copy of the file somewhere unless you well, want to have a hassle with copying it over and over again to the VM. So I keep a copy within the VM. And um, let's just run it and see what happens in this. Okay, change, and oh, that's already at five seconds, very good. Now I will be double clicking and here is the new process of it. And soon you will see, the, there's a shite process run DL32XE and there's a cmd.exe. And the cmd part uh, deletes this file. Well, it's gone. And now it will be stopping, oh, terminating. Okay. And the run dl 32 exe keeps running here. So if you look at this, um, you see this is indeed referring to the original legit Windows run dl 32exe in the ZISVAL64 folder and yeah looking into this well makes it seem like this is a legit process running right and that's the whole purpose of of the injection part but it's actually malicious the code inside this so let's kill this and see how we get to the code that's been injected in there so it's gone. Okay, we start API monitor. Yes, all right. Okay, it runs the first time because I set back the machine. <coughs> now, as I told you, the most important APIs for this kind of process injection are create remote thread. So, Let's place a check mark on this and on the extended version. Also, it somehow creates a thread, uh, it creates a process. So let's make this no. create process A. Now, I'm not sure that this will be work working with logging this. Also, NT create process which is a bit lower in the hierarchy. Um, it, I don't know if this is because APM monitor is just an alpha, uh, but it seems to me that some APIs aren't um, locked properly or monitored properly, but they work if I breakpoint them in IDA or in, um, in another debugger. So I don't know why it sometimes doesn't work. Um, so, okay, another one into resume thread. So we know when the injection part is over. 
Okay, that's here. And we want um, write process memory, of course. That's here. And there is a version, also an NT version, that's NT write virtual memory. So let's breakpoint that too. And we may also breakpoint the allocation. Um, I think that's good. Virtual alloc. So, okay. That's it. And yeah, of course, the sample is now been deleted. So make a copy of it. It will be deleted again. Right, and we execute that. <coughs> now we can watch it running, and when it's gone, we may kill the run DLL. You can also do that from here. Um, there's a list of running processes in API Monitor, so it's done now. It called the resume thread, so we can kill it. And terminate and uh, that's all we see like we don't see any create process and I don't know why that is so it's kind of weird and if you look into the um, into some of the calls and the stack or the call stack you will see that it has been called so I don't know why it's not being logged directly also if you go down here to yeah that's actually the interesting part like uh, you can um, take a look at these calls and at the at the buffer that's been given. So there's this write virtual memory call, which takes a buffer. And uh, this will write the contents of the buffer into the virtual memory portion. So here you can see this. And you see in the call stake is write process memory. So it's still not in this list. I don't know why that is. And um, do we also see the, yeah, the, there's the create remote thread on the call stack. I kind of expected to see it here. Well, but I think you can still get a good idea how this looks like. And uh, especially you may get an idea uh, where and when you have to dump the memory. Now here you can dump this buffer, but it seems you only get one part of it and not all all you want to have. Um, so if you want to dump all of the contents that are being written to the process, uh, I would prefer to use a debugger. And that's what we will do now. So copy this again. Okay, now I will be using x64 dbg to dump the injected portion of the code and um, that's what we will do. We need the 62-bit um, version because it's a 62-bit file and there it is, okay. And we, well, let's, let's just showcase a bit how um, how this process injection part works now we have uh, we can press control G and then write the um, APIs we want to monitor now we know from from API monitor from the core sec which um, APIs are used so we can just target them right away and I already did that here. Um, create process A is the first one. The second one will be um, create remote thread. Okay, so also place a breakpoint right here. Then go to write process memory.
that's this one. And last but not least, the um, NT resume thread. So you know when it's done and in case you ran too far of it. So that's you. Okay, then you just um, run it. So we are now at the entry point. So we press F9 again. And we are now, if you look here at this part, it says exception access violation. Just press F9 again, we will ignore that. And now we have to wait a little bit. And there's the create process A call. And um, it starts the run DS32.exe process. So um, at this point, if you look into Process Explorer, you see the process has not been created yet. And press F9 again, and then it will write um, the injected code to the process. And we should see it now. Here it is, run DL32.exe, it's in suspended state. And we can take a look at parts of the buffer and uh, what is being written to that part. So this uh, portion is the buffer. I will have to look up the, um, I turned off the internet, so I won't show you that right now. But if you look up at MSDN, the um, right process memory call, you will see that the third argument or parameter is the address to the buffer. And this is the buffer here. And I think this is the size of it. So at this point, you can already dump the buffer from, from the hex dump here. So um, this will be writing the uh, um, contents of the buffer to this address D0000 into the target process run DL32.exe. So if we run again, we get the create remote thread call. And what this does, it says, uh, please create a thread that runs the function that's at this address. So we see the very same address where we um, wrote our function to, our function, where we wrote this the buffer contents into the process memory. So at this address in the target process, there should be the um, injected code as well. And we can see this in um, using AJXD. You can just say, okay, open RAM and open run DL32.exe and then just go with search, go to, to that address. So, wait, that was the wrong address. I think that was a zero too much. Yes, it was a zero too much. <clears throat> Go to and one zero less. Okay, and here you can see it. Now, why? Is, what is this actually? You can see this is the portion that downloads the hosted images where um, the steganography part or where the code is hidden in these images. And it's um, probably, I, I didn't look into this function, but this function will probably um, extract the code and then run it somehow. So, but uh, yeah, you can now dump the buffer from here, you know the size, uh, or you just dump the whole memory region and just put this thing into IDA, for instance, uh, which will be able to analyze this as code. So if you do this, you are fine with analyzing the sample further. So yeah, it's very interesting. That's it with um, process injection using create remote thread and write process memory. I hope this helped you to understand it. And yeah, thanks for watching. See you next time.